I'm going to present to you our work titled Static and Dynamic Values of Computation in MCTS. I'm Eren Sezenar, and this is joint work with Peter Diane. Monte Carlo Research is a sample-based planning algorithm that tries to evaluate the best action at the current state by partially building a tree of future consequences. Critical in MCTS is choosing a node at which to spend computational effort. In this case, collecting information by performing what is known as a rollout. Conventional MCTS methods such as UCT make this choice by balancing exploration of undercomputed parts of the tree with exploitation of apparently good nodes. However, UCT only uses past information. Here, we consider if we can do better by calculating the value of future computations for improving our estimate at the root. In essence, we want to choose a computation that's a rollout that will have the biggest impact on the policy at the root state S. How can we quantify this impact? First, we will address how we can estimate action values at S. Then, we will relate the computations to these action values. I would like to pose a puzzle to motivate our approach. Let's say there are two rooms. The first room contains two boxes, and the second room contains five boxes. And we know that each box contains some uh, random amount of money that is IIP, but unknown. And you need to choose a room first, then you get to choose a box in that room and open it and collect the money. In this case, which room would you choose? It doesn't really matter because all the boxes are equally valuable, uh, valuable in expectation. Um, but let's change the conditions slightly such that after you commit to a room, you can actually peek inside the boxes in that room and then choose the one that you want. In this case, the second room is more valuable because it will yield more money in expectation. This shows that our evaluation of the rooms um, actually depends on how much information we can gather after entering the room. This is somewhat analogous to MCTS. Uh, we can See, uh, we can see that choosing a room is somewhat like taking a root level action and opening a box is similar to performing a rollout. Um, so the key insight is that the value uh, of a root level action depends on how much information we can gather in the future. However, MCT, MCTS methods such as UCT only value actions statically, taking previous computations into account, but not possible future computations. Next, we will formalize this notion of static valuation and also propose a dynamic valuation scheme which incorporates the possible impact of future computations. We adopt a notation from Sutton and Barton, and optimal state uh, action values can be defined recursively through the Bellman optimality equation. And we can unroll this equation. If you were to unroll this for two steps, our um, graph would look like this. So we have some um, leaf values, which we denote with Q0. And the root values will be um, combinations, uh, will be defined as combinations of the, these uh, leaf values. And we assume a Bayesian prior over these leaf values and update them by conditioning on rollouts. Assume we are in a simple deterministic MDP, and this is the current state of our search tree. We have some posterior leaf values conditioned on the knowledge state omega 1 to t, which is defined as a sequence of past rollout results. We can then relate these leaf values to the root action values via the end step equation. If we assume we will be able to resolve all of our certainty about um, the leaf values in the future, this corresponds to taking the expected uh, maximum of these um, leaf value distributions. We denote this expectation with psi and refer to it as the dynamic value because it incorporates the value that will be gained from future computations. Tying this to our puzzle, the dynamic value function values a room assuming one gets to open up all the boxes in the future. Unfortunately, computing psi is generally difficult, but we offer efficient approximations in the paper. 
Alternatively, we can first take the expectations of these distributions and then the maximum. That is, we can swap the maximum and the expectation. And we denote this value with phi and refer to it as a static value. This valuation is akin to the first case of the puzzle where the valuation assumes no additional information in the future. And computing phi is easier. Dynamic and static value functions assume respectively infinite and zero computations in the future. In practice, the actual value will lie between these extremes. However, we show that um, these values have desirable properties and can be used as proxies. We define the value of computation as the expected change in the static uh, or dynamic value at the root state resulting from a computation omega. And uh, the exact cost of calculating uh, this value depends on the exact setting. For, is, for instance, if we assume a conjugate multivariate Gaussian prior over the leaf values, then a static value VOC can be computed in constant time if the covariance matrix is diagonal, which is, by the way, uh, the usual assumption made by uh, many of the MCTS methods. Uh, but if we want to exploit the covariance between the node values, then we can do this in n square log n time, where n is the number of leaves. Um, furthermore, we show that a policy that maximizes walk greedily is one step and asymptotically optimal. And uh, our walk definitions go beyond certain known limitations of existing walk definitions. We test our methods in two environments. I'm going to talk about the first environment, Peg Solitaire, and we test against four different baseline algorithms. Peg Solitaire is a deterministic single player board game um, where you remove marbles, which are called pegs, by hopping over them. And the goal is to minimize the number of pegs remaining on the board. Here, we display the remaining number of pegs as a function of the rollout budget. We see that in the small budget regime, the policy utilizing static values performs the best. Whereas in the large budget regime, dynamic value to walk policy does very well along with Thompson sampling. This makes intuitive sense as static and dynamic values are more accurate by design for small and large budgets respectively. We propose MCTS algorithms based on the principle of computation value maximization. We offer theoretical guarantees such as one step and asymptotic optimality and outperform baselines on simple problems. However, computing VOC policies can be costly, but it might be possible to use neural networks to obtain efficient approximations rather than computing the exact values. Thank you for listening and I look forward to your questions.